The purpose of this video is to provide a step-by-step -step example of interfacing the WAGO 75841 programmable field bus coupler or the WAGO 75341 field bus coupler with an Allen Bradley 1756 Control Logix Ethernet bridge using Ethernet IP protocol. In this example, the 1756 Ethernet bridge module functions as an Ethernet IP scanner and uses control and information protocol to manage the inputs and the outputs of the WAGO node. This is also known as implicit messaging. There are two main steps in setting up this configuration. The first step will be to configure WAGO's 75841 or the WAGO 75341 for Ethernet IP. The second step will, to be, will be to configure Allen Bradley's 17, 1756 Ethernet bridge module as an Ethernet IP scanner. We will start by configuring the WAGO 75841 for Ethernet IP. In this step, the Ethernet IP settings for the WAGO 75841 are configured through the built-in web pages on the WAGO 75841. Using a web browser, web browser such as Microsoft Internet Explorer, go ahead and type in the IP address of the Woggle coupler into the address field. Once you've done that and you've selected Go, the uh, page, a page or an HTML page similar to what you have seen here um, should appear. From here, we're going to go to the navigation links on the left, and we're going to click on port. And sh you should be at this point in time prompted for a username and password. Um, by default, the username is admin. Password will be Wago. Okay. Once you've entered those, again, these will both be lowercase. And once you've entered those, go ahead and click on OK. Now this is going to bring us to the port uh, configuration or port settings window if you will. Here you will see a list of supported protocols um, that the WAGO 75841 in this case supports. Um, what we need to do is enable this device or the WAGO 75841 to function over Ethernet IP. So we find Ethernet IP here, we're going to enable this. At the same time um, if Modbus UDP or Modbus TCP is enabled, we need to click on those to unselect them. Okay. The reason for that is that both Modbus TCP and Modbus UDP protocols must be disabled in order to map the input and output process image to an Ethernet IP field bus master. If either of these Modbus protocols is enabled, the inputs and outputs will be mapped for a Modbus TCP or UDP master. And again, we do not want that in this scenario because we, we do want to use uh, Ethernet IP. Okay. Once you've made these appropriate changes here, go ahead and cl click on Submit at the bottom of the uh, web-based management page. And again, this will prompt you for a username and password again. Username is admin, password is Wago, all lowercase. And once you click on OK, this, these changes that we made will then be uh, written down to the, uh, the controller or the coupler. All right. Now, at this point in time, you need to perform a uh, hardware software reset so the new um, settings take effect. And again, that hardware software reset will be done on the WAGO coupler. Now at this point in time, the WAGO 75841 um, programmable field bus coupler is now ready to use. The next step in uh, configuring this setup will be to configure Allen Bradley's 1756 Ethernet bridge module as an Ethernet IP scanner. And now going into the Allen Bradley um, configuration, I'm going to make a general assumption that you have an overall understanding of Allen Bradley's hardware and software. 
And again, in, in my example here, um, we're going to focus only on the configuration that I have here, and that's the Logix 5555 controller um, using RS Logix 5000 software. And in doing so, we'll, we will enable the Wago coupler to be uh, accessible as a remote I.O. node via Ethernet IP. So go ahead and start your RS Logix 5000 software. When you do that, you should get the main window uh, here displayed. And now we need to create a new project. So we're going to go to File and then New. And now we can see that the new controller dialog uh, window has appeared. Here we need to adjust a few of the following parameters or, or enter a few parameters. First of all will be the type. Well, what type of Control Logix controller is this going to be for? In our case, it is the Logix 5555 controller. So go ahead and select the revision that you are using on this device. We will give this controller a name or the project name, and I'm going to call it Wago Ethernet IP. And I'll give this a short description so we know what it is. And then go ahead and select your chassis type. Um, again, we are in this environment here. I'm using a Control Logic 1756 four slot Control Logic chassis. Um, next will be to select the appropriate slot and then your uh, path in order to save this project to. Once you're happy with the parameters that you've entered here, go ahead and select OK or click OK. All right, and now we can see that we've added the um, controller to the uh, tree on the left-hand side. Um, but before we can add the Wago I/O node to the Logix 555 I/O configuration, we first have to add the local 1756 Ethernet bridge module. Now, to do this, we're going to highlight the I/O configuration, going to right-click, and we're going to add a new module. Now we will find the bridge module under the communications uh, modules. So we're going to select communications, go ahead and expand this. And again, I'm using a 1756 Ethernet bridge. Once I've selected the appropriate module that I'm using, I click OK. You'll be prompted to select the revision, the major revision for that module. I'm using revision 4, so again I'm going to select OK. Now from here, the select module type dialog window is displayed, or the new module window is displayed. Um, and we need to go ahead and again adjust these uh, properties, if you will. I'm simply going to call this local Ethernet bridge. Uh, it is in slot 1 in my backplane. And again, we are using revision 4. Um, now you will have to enter the IP address of this of your Ethernet bridge module. And I will do that now here. Okay. Once you're happy with the parameters you've entered here, go ahead and click on OK. Now if you look in the um, I, the configuration to the left, um, you'll see that the 1756 Ethernet bridge module is now part of our hardware configuration. Now we are going to add the Wago I.O. node to this configuration. Um, so what we need to do is highlight the 1756 Ethernet bridge module that was just added. I'm going to right click 
and we're going to select new module. Now again, under the communications uh, modules, go ahead and peel down through here. And what we're looking for is an Ethernet module, and we're looking for this generic Ethernet module. And once you've found that and you have that highlighted, click OK. Now the new module window and the properties windows for this generic Ethernet module um, will open up. And again, give this a name so you know what the, the physical module is on the within the network. And I'm simply going to call this Wago IO. Could enter a description here if you like. I'm not going to in this case. And select the COM format. Um, I'm going to use a signed integer here. And now we'll be to enter the IP address of the Wago node. Um, and again, if you forgot this or whatever the case may be, hopefully you've written it down. Um, if not, we could always go back here and look at uh, your web-based management page um, if it is uh, if you still have that open. So I'm going to go ahead and enter that um, IO IP address here. And again, this is the IP address of the Wago I.O. node. The next thing we need to enter are connection parameters. Um, and again, I'm going to make the assumption that you have a, a familiarity with uh, Alan Bradley's hardware and software environment and their as and assembly instances. Um, so on the input side here, I'm going to use assembly instance 107. The size of this instance is going to be 5 bytes. And the output assembly instance will be 101. And again, 5 bytes in size. Now, for the configuration um, instance, I'm going to use a 1 here, but this will not be used by the system. Okay. So now we've configured our parameters for the new module. Okay, which is the uh, for the Wago I.O. node. Once you're happy with the parameters you've entered here, go ahead and uh, click on OK. Alright. Now if we look over here, we can see that the Wago uh, Ethernet module has been added to our configuration. At this point in time, now the program can now be downloaded to the Logix controller. So from here, I'm going to go communications and then I'm going to go to download. And again, you may be prompted to download the offline project. That's fine. Go ahead and select download. Now, after downloading, if everything was set up correctly, the I/O ind indicator light um, should be green, as we can see right here on the screen. Um, additionally, when we place the cur cursor over uh, the Ethernet module, the Wago I/O that we created here, um, the module fault box at the bottom of the figure should be blank and you notice I do not have any fault errors or an exclamation point here in yellow on the module itself. Okay, so we know that we are in uh, um, a good operational state between the, uh, the, the LED indicator here or the indicator and uh, the fact that we have no errors on the module. Now we can go ahead and take a look at this um, we can view the process data from the Wago 75841. And the way we're going to do that is go ahead and click on controller tags. Okay. And you can physically see here now um, the process data from the Wago 75841 and its associated uh, modules. Okay. 
Now again, this is a very small process image, um, only a few modules in my node here. Um, but again, the point being that we can now see this data, and we do have world, we have, do have access now from the Control Logics controller. So after completing the steps that we've just gone through, um, the configuration of the WAGO 75841 uh, PFC and the 1756 Ethernet bridge module, um, they're complete. The WAGO input and output data is now accessible to the Control Logics 555 controller in my case, um, as defined in these tables here. Um, so at this time, I would like to thank you all for watching. And again, as with any of our uh, products, if you have any more questions or additional questions about the Wago products, please don't hesitate to contact uh, your local Wago sales representative or visit us at www.wago.us. Thank you.